also persistently high intakes of calcium create an environment where the supercharged vitamin D declines. Most doctors are not aware of this and therefore recommend both higher intakes of dairy products and calcium supplements, thinking they are reducing the risk of osteoporosis. Long-term consumption of calcium, especially as it occurs in, in a young person's life and on into the mid-years, in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, if one is accustomed to consuming really high levels of calcium, the body again tries to adapt to those, makes the most of it, in a sense, it's not good, but the body's doing its best it can to minimize the harm that otherwise might occur. So when a person reaches the late stages, they're accustomed to consuming high calcium diets, it's going to take a while to readapt a little bit. And during that period, and perhaps even before, when calcium is consumed at these high levels, one of the means by which the body protects itself against that harm uh, is to minimize calcium absorption in the intestinal tract. Serious diseases are not only affecting more and more people, they are occurring at a younger age. Belinda Emmett died of breast cancer at the age of 32. Despite the massive amounts of money that have been poured into cancer research, the risk of dying from cancer has actually increased by 6% from 1970 to 1994. John McDougall is a physician and nutrition expert who teaches better health through vegetarian cuisine. He has been studying, writing and speaking out about the effects of nutrition on disease for over 30 years. This is what Dr. McDougall has to say. I'm a medical doctor and I'm an internist, a board certified internist, and I take care of my patients based on correcting the cause of their sickness. They're sick because they eat a diet of kings and queens. They eat rich foods all day long, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a, it's a feast. And every morning they have Easter for breakfast. They go on to Thanksgiving and Christmas for lunch and dinner. And every night after dinner they have a birthday party. As a result of eating all this feast food, this king and queen food, they're fat and sick, just like royalty has always been throughout history. And so the way you correct the problem is not by giving them a bunch of drugs or vitamin pills. You change the cause of the problem, all this rich food. So instead you put them on a healthy diet. You put them on really tasty, healthy foods like oatmeal for breakfast. You give them various healthy soups and sandwiches for lunch. For dinner you give them bean burritos, mushu vegetables. Animal protein and cholesterol cause heart disease. The higher the blood cholesterol, the higher the risk of heart disease. Heart disease is the most common of the diseases of affluence. It affects one in two men and one in three women. It kills one in three of these people every 30 seconds in the United States alone. Women die eight times more frequently from heart disease than breast cancer. Yet, most people are more afraid of cancer than this silent and deadly number one killer. Dr. Ezelstein is a distinguished surgeon with some 40 years of expertise. He conducted the longest study demonstrating beyond any doubt that a pure vegetarian diet with no dairy products or eggs effectively reverses heart disease and stops it from progressing. We have to appreciate just how uh, much cardiovascular disease has really infiltrated uh, our health situation. We know, for instance, that through the battle casualties that were studied in Korea and in Vietnam, that roughly at, at an average age of 20, 80 percent of these young GIs, when their coronary arteries are examined without a microscope, already have gross evidence of the disease. Now, is it therefore any surprise that when somebody like Dr. Lewis Culler, who is a professor of public health on the University of Pittsburgh, has stated that all men by age 65 and women by age 70 who have been exposed to a traditional Western diet have diffuse cardiovascular disease? What does that tell you? Our entire nation, all men and all women, 
have cardiovascular disease. This is so powerful to get across to the organizations that are providing us with our food and our food guidelines. Most people think that medication for lowering cholesterol and blood pressure or bypass surgery can cure their problems once they get it. The pain accompanying heart disease is often quite severe and crippling. Bypass surgery and other available procedures are not an effective solution. In Western medicine, what the profession has to offer is, of course, just drugs, pills, procedures such as stents or bypasses. Now, these procedures have a great deal of, of risk. It's not well advertised, but of the million people, for instance, who are going to be having a stent this year, 1% are going to die at the time of the stent. 1% of the million is 10,000. Now, if we had lost 10,000 GIs in Iraq this year, it would be called carnage. Of those 1 million people who have stents, there are going to be 4% who are going to have a heart attack at the time of the stent. That means 40,000 people at the time they're having a procedure to protect them from having a heart attack are going to sustain a heart attack. Pills and procedures uh, really just don't get it done or the, because it never addresses the basic causation of the disease itself, which is the toxic Western diet. Blood cholesterol is the single most crucial factor in determining heart and blood vessel disease. Together with other fats, proteins, immune system cells and other components, cholesterol deposits on the inner walls of arteries. This accumulation eventually leads to blood vessel blockages to the heart. According to the Bogalusa Heart Study, which appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine, 50% of children, 2 to 15 years, have fatty streaks marking the beginning stages of heart disease. Thirty million American men have erectile dysfunction. A meat-based diet doesn't just give you a heart attack eventually. It can also make you impotent. And I have found that for a lot of folks, that will get their attention, especially if you're an 18-year-old young man. The male sexual apparatus is a rather odd hydraulic system that does require a good blood flow in order to work properly, if you see what I mean. So if you have blocked arteries to the heart, the, the heart can die, but if you block the arteries to a man's private parts, uh, they don't function so well uh, anymore either. And I think that the big market we have now for Viagra and other uh, erectile dysfunction medications comes in a large measure from the fact that a lot of men are eating unhealthy foods. I'll tell you something funny. If you look in the uh, prescribing information for Viagra, it says it works better if you don't eat a fatty meal. Well, I have to tell you, everything works better if you don't eat a fatty meal and if you eat a healthy enough vegan diet for a long enough period of time, I don't think you're going to need that prescription at all. Autoimmune diseases result from the body attacking its own tissues and damaging or destroying them. The end result is progressive loss of various physical or mental functions. There are some 40 different types of autoimmune diseases. The most common include type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, thyroid gland overfunctioning or underfunctioning, kidney and muscle inflammation. Virtually any organ in the body can be the target of destruction by the body's own immune system. About 3% of the American people currently suffer from one or more of these crippling diseases. This totals about 8.5 million people. Some estimates are as high as 12 to 13 million. With 250,000 more people diagnosed every year. Once the attack and destruction of the various organs begin, they will generally continue and the damage done is not reversible by any currently available means. 
the only remedy is the use of drugs that suppress the entire immune system. These drugs have a variety of other untoward and often serious side effects on the whole body. I was told from a very young age that I would get diabetes. I was put on a very low, what the doctors call a baby dose of diabetic medication. That turned into a very heavy dose within a year and a half. I mean, just so much medication. It's making me foggy in my brain. I can't afford that. I can't, I can't live like that. So I wrote the doctor a letter a couple of weeks ago and said, instead of your medication, I'm going to step up the cardio. I'm going to, I'm going to seek out a, someone that knows about food and and uh, really try to do something about this. And the doctor said, well, you're non-compliant and you'll lose your medical insurance. How does eating animal tissues trigger our immune system to attack our own body? Many of the proteins found in animals are very similar to those found in our human tissues. During digestion, some of these animal proteins enter our bloodstream without being broken down into the basic components. These animal proteins are then treated as foreign invaders and are attacked by our own immune system and destroyed. But because they resemble very closely our own tissues, the body begins to attack and destroy our tissues as well. Cow's milk protein is one of such foreign proteins that mimics some of the proteins found in our body. Specifically, it looks the same as cells in our pancreas, which make insulin. In getting rid of the foreign cow's milk protein, our body also destroys the insulin-producing cells. This means that for the rest of the child's or person's life, they will suffer from type 1 diabetes, in which insulin injections will have to be given several times a day, and diet strictly controlled. And that lasts for a lifetime. That is a devastating disease. That is a devastating disease. In Finland, people have one of the highest milk consumptions in the world. Children from 0 to 14 years of age drink an average of over 200 liters of milk or equivalent dairy products per person per year. The result is that type 1 diabetes is 36 times more common in Finland than in Japan, where milk and dairy consumption is one of the lowest in the world. In the United States today, one in 13 people has diabetes. The Center for Disease Control in the United States has predicted that one in three Caucasian children and one in two Hispanic or black American children born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes at some stage in their lifetime. The good news is that diabetes has been shown to be reversible, or at least its progression slowed down by a pure vegetarian, non-dairy diet. We've recently been conducting a research study in individuals with diabetes, and a group of, of participants is randomly assigned to either a current diet for diabetes, which is the, the, the kind of diet that's been used for a number of years, which includes some meat and dairy products and things. But it tries to be cautious about carbohydrate. That's the control group. The experimental group is using a diet that's entirely vegan, no animal products. It also keeps oils low, and we avoid sugary foods, but we're not low in starch at all. There's, there's plenty of carbohydrate in the, from the healthiest forms. Well, the results have been striking. The individuals on the vegan diet are doing hands down better than the individuals on the other diet. So we now believe there, there's substantial evidence suggesting that the best diet for diabetes is probably a low-fat vegan diet. I was not aware how affected my body would be if I ate, if I eliminated animal products and dairy. I've lost weight, I'm continuing to lose weight. My doctor is so encouraged that she told me that I could be off all my medication, which includes two high blood pressure medications, cholesterol, uh, and diabetic within six month period of time.